For a case of elbow pain, using our mnemonic old carts will note the onset. When did your pain start? Did it come on suddenly or was it more gradual? And do you remember what you were doing at the time? For the location, we'll ask our patient to point with one finger. For the duration, we want to know if your pain has been constant since it started or is it more intermittent. If that's the case, we'd like to note the frequency. That is, how long does an episode of your pain last for and how many episodes have you been having per day or per week? Next, we can note the progression. Does your pain appear to be occurring more frequently or more severely? Or if there has been no progression, we'll also want to state that in our patient note to show that we've asked. To help characterize the pain, we'd like some descriptors, sharp or dull among others. And since this can involve the nerves as we'll see below, we'll ask about any numbness, tingling, or motor weakness, aggravating and alleviating factors, radiation, treatments tried, and severity on a scale of 1 to 10. And again, if there are no aggravating and alleviating factors or radiation, we'll also want to state that in our patient note to show we've asked. We'll break down our case of elbow pain into traumatic and atraumatic causes. For all cases, let's order a CBC, serum electrolytes, an x-ray of the right or left elbow, and if we have any neuropathy, as we'll see above, a nerve conduction study or an electromyogram. Starting from the left with an elbow dislocation, our supporting points will include elbow pain, an onset that's sudden after a fall or trauma, and it will be aggravated by movements. We'll note, as we'll see coming up, a decreased range of motion in our physical exam. In an elbow or condyle or electronon fracture, we'll see elbow pain, an onset that's also sudden after a fall or trauma, and since the fracture can involve the underlying nerve, we could note neuropathy or numbness, tingling, a sensory loss, or motor weakness. It will be aggravated by movement as well, and we'll find limited relief by conservative management because the underlying fracture hasn't been fixed. We'll also note a decreased range of motion in our physical exam. In osteoarthritis, or DJD, We'll see elbow pain on onset here that's now more gradual but progressively worsening. Classically, it's alleviated with rest and seen in an elder patient. In biceps tendonitis, the chronic form or in a tear seen acutely, we'll find anterior elbow pain, particularly in the antecubital fossa because this is involving the distal biceps tendon versus the proximal biceps tendon seen in a shoulder tendonitis. The onset can be in the chronic form after heavy use or many, many years of wear and tear or lifting weights, or in the acute form after sudden trauma, such as acutely lifting something heavy, and could be accompanied by the characteristic popping sound. It will be aggravated by carrying or further lifting, and this time it will be radiating proximally up the biceps, and we can note a positive hook test or bicep squeeze, and we'll add to our workup an ultrasound of the right or left elbow. In medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow, we'll find medial elbow pain and it will be aggravated by golf or any activity that involves wrist flexing and alleviated by conservative management. We'll find a positive medial epicondyl test and we'll add an ultrasound of the right or left elbow. In lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow, we'll find lateral elbow pain and it will be aggravated by tennis or any activity that involves wrist extending and alleviated by conservative management, ICE or NSAIDs. And as we'll see in our physical exam coming up, the positive special test for COSINS. And we'll add here as well an ultrasound of the right or left elbow. In rheumatoid arthritis, we'll find an elbow pain and characteristically aggravated in the morning, high yield with morning stiffness and alleviated with use. And additional bilateral small joint arthritis in the wrists or fingers. And now we could see systemic symptoms as well, fatigue, fever, or weight loss noted in our review of symptoms. We could also note a positive family history, and we'll order ESR, CRP, rheumatoid factor, and anti-CCP antibodies. In systemic lupus erythematosus, we'll find an elbow pain, malar rash, oral ulcers. Our patient can also be complaining of photosensitivity or rainouts, which are blue fingers in the cold or times of stress. And as well, we could find systemic symptoms in our review of symptoms, fatigue, fever, or weight loss. And we can note a history of abortions in our OB or gyne histories. We'll order ESR CRP, an ANA, anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies, and anti-Smith antibodies. In crystal arthritis, we'll find elbow pain and now with erythema, warmth, or swelling noted in our inspection and palpation. For gout, we can also note Dagra in the big toe, or tophi crystal deposits in the ear behind the Achilles, and a history of heavy alcohol drinking, 
red meat, or diuretic. And pseudogout tends to occur in an older population. And we'll order arthrocentesis for gram stain, culture, microscopy, and serum uric acid. In electronon bursitis, we'll see posterior elbow pain. We can note a fever and also in our inspection and palpation, erythema, warmth, and swelling. And the key defining characteristic versus septic arthritis, as we'll see coming up, is in electronon bursitis, we're maintaining a full extension, flexion, and extension because the elbow joint itself is not involved. It's mainly the bursa behind it. We can note as well a history of skin trauma, abrasions or cuts, and diabetes. And we'll order an electron bursa aspiration for gram stain and culture. And finally, in septic arthritis, we'll find elbow pain, as well noted with a fever in our vital signs and an inspection and palpation. We'll see erythema, warmth, and swelling. For gonococcal septic arthritis, it can be a female patient because they're asymptomatic gonococcal carriers. It can also be seen with a characteristic pustule rash and history of STDs or multiple sexual partners or the non-gonococcal form, staph aureus or strep, will be seen with a history of skin traumas, abrasions or cuts, diabetes or IV drug use, and will order ESR CRP, arthrocentesis for gram stain culture, microscopy, and blood cultures. We're gonna examine the elbow. Remember and show that we examined the elbow as well, and now we're in elbow. The thing is, if you have a joint that's problematic, a joint you want to examine, you want to examine the joint above it and also below it. And we're going to do the same here. We're going to follow the same algorithms. IPROM, MRSP, inspection, palpation, range of motion, muscle strength, sensations, reflexes, and pulses. And a special test, if available and if indicated. So, um, good morning. Uh, morning. You have pain anywhere? Yes, my elbow a little bit has been okay. bothering me for a few days now. Okay. I'm so sorry to hear that, okay? Um, I'm going to examine you, okay? If anything hurts, please feel free to let me know, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> My hands are dry now, and now I can touch the patient. All right. So I'm going to inspect the elbow. Please, can you raise it up a little bit? Thank you. All right, there are no lesions, no redness, no swellings, no vis visible lesions, okay? So now it's time to palpate the elbow. I'm going to feel around. Anterior. Try to walk my way back to the lateral epicondyle. Medial epicondyle. Okay, feel all the way around. Do you have any pain? Yes. Where do you feel? In the, the back where you were pressing. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay. So I'm going to do the range of motion. Could you flex your elbow? Okay, good. Extend, okay, bring it back, okay, relax it and do this, pronate, supinate, excellent. Any pain when you didn't know that? A little bit. Yeah, you can relax your arm now. So that was the range of motion I just did for his elbow. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to take a quick look above and below. To the shoulder, I'm going to take a look. Any pain in your shoulder? No. I'm just going to just touch real quick. Any pain when I touch, when no. I palpate? Okay. Now, can you just do as I do? Up. Okay. Down. Forward. Backwards. Okay. Bring it back. Then external rotation and internal rotation. Any pain? No. Was there any pain that radiated to your elbow no. when you did any of that? Okay. So because you can have some pain actually that you know can radiate down to the elbow and can cause an elbow pain. So I have to rule that out. All right. So now it's time to do the wrist. Can you do this for me? Thank you. Um, there are no lesions as well on the on the wrist. So do this. Okay. To flex. Extend for me. No pain. No. Radial deviation. Honor deviation. No pain. No. All right, thank you very much. So I'm done with the range of motion and inspection and palpation of the muscle of the joints above and below. So time again for muscle strength. So I'm going to check your muscle strength, okay? Could you do this for me? Now pull. All right, excellent. Now keeping your hands, can you just uh, 
try to abduct both abduct both excellent do this for me push against my resistance pull up all right thank you very much so i've checked the muscle strength of the upper limbs okay again because i'm ass assessing the elbow joint all right so now it's time for sensation i'm gonna get out I'm gonna get this out and i'm gonna ask him to close his eyes for me all right so can you feel this yes yes sharp or soft sure. same on both sides yes excellent can you feel this yes can you feel that yes sharp or soft soft same on both sides yes can you feel that yes can you feel that yes sharp or soft soft same on both sides yes okay you can open your eyes thank, thank you, you very much okay so um that's the sensations the uh, sensation done and i'm going to check for reflexes as well same as last time and i want to be very careful with the reflexes here because he has the elbow pain all right so um could you just free up your arm a little bit okay i'm gonna do this again two plus just free it up okay Again, with uh, musculoskeletal exams, you want to do it on both sides, but the interest of time, I'm going to do it on one side. Okay, so I isolate the tendon here. Two plus. Thank you very much. All right. So that's done with uh, the bicep and the tricep reflex, and I'm, I'm going to check his pulses now. All right. Let me feel. Yeah, those are nice radial pulses, strong, two plus as well, that I can feel. Okay, so the algorithm is done. Inspection, palpation, range of motion, muscle strength, sensations, pulses, um, and reflexes. Uh, and now I'm going to do a special test. For the elbow, they are not a lot really, but uh, in a patient who has a medial lateral epicondylitis, you know, basically tennis elbow. You can do a, a test called the Cousin test. For the Cousin test, I'm just going to have him pronate, keep his forearm pronated like this, and can, uh, with radial deviation. So can you do as I do like this? Good. So you can see the radial deviation, okay? And then I'm going to try to push down against his resistance, and I'm going to feel. Do you feel any yes. pain? I okay, so that's a positive cousin test right there. And uh, I'm going to conclude again. Please relax. I'm going to conclude again by asking him if he has any questions for me. So I'm done with your physical exam, okay? Hope it didn't hurt. Hope it was fine. And do you have any questions for me? Yes, doctor. Do you think I'll ever be able to use my arm again like before? Um, from what I have assessed, okay, it seems you have an inflammation of a tendon in your elbow. It's easily managed, thankfully, okay, um, by some pain medications, okay, just to reduce the inflammation there. Um, so, yes, you'll be able to get um, full use of your elbow. All you need to do is just take the medications, not for too long, and get some rest of that arm, you know, with some good stretching exercises, okay? But, yes, you'll retain full function of your arm. Thank you. Thank All you right. And that ends the elbow physical examination.